Hi guys, so this is the second video for our gross requirements plan. So, uh, I just copied the table from the example. So, you have your items, your on-hand items, and your lead time, as well as our product structure. Okay, so throughout the gross requirements plan, so we will be needing this template. So, you have your period, your gross requirements, your projected on-hand, your net requirements, your planned order receipt, and your planned order release. So, per item yung gagawin natin dito. Ngayon, if you have watched the video for MRP, lot sizing technique, so di ba we have discussed there three lot sizing techniques. So, isa lang yung gagamitin natin for the gross requirements plan. And that is lot for lot. So, yung lot for lot, so that is the easiest uh, method since just in time yung strategy na ina-apply sa kanya. Now, sa gross requirements plan, per item yung paggawa ng plan natin. So, we start with plan or with item A. So, kay item A, so, kung maalala ninyo, ang sabi, we received an order of 15 units on week 8. So, sa gross requirement, you will need 15 units ng week 8. So, palta natin yung, yung ink. So, 15 units tayo on week 8. Ngayon, check natin yung ating values here. So, yung on hand ko is 0 and my lead time is 1 week. So, yung aking on hand is 0. So, lead time is also 1 week. So, this will be carried over hanggang kailangan ko nang gumamit ng inventory. Pero in this case, 0 naman kasi siya. So, we'll have a value in our net requirements. Now, si net requirements, nagkakaroon lang yan ng value if your projected on hand is less than your gross requirement. So, para malaman lang yung net requirements, it's just the absolute difference between your projected on hand and your gross requirement. So, 0 minus 15 and then the absolute value known is also 15. So, yun yung ating magiging net requirement. Ngayon, sa ating uh, lot sizing technique, so yung planned order receipt, so ibig sabihin yan daw dapat yung period na marireceive ko yung in-order ko. So, that's also on week 8. So, kasi week 8 yung delivery natin. So, ang sabi, ang lead time is 1 week. So, therefore, you have to release your order a week prior to receiving, which is week 7. Okay? Now, based on the product structure, after product A, si item B yung susunod. Ngayon, sa mga susunod na mga items, yung item B, kung saan yung pinagtapusan ng precedent item niya, dun naman siya magsa-start. So, dahil si B, nakadepende kay A, so kung saan nagtapos ang item A, dun naman magsisimula ang item B. Natapos si item A sa week 7, so therefore, si item B ay magagamit or magsisimula sa week 7. So, dahil lang sinabi, one item of B is equivalent to one item of A, so kaya yung aking item B is also 15 and that is on week 7. Okay? Now, ang aking on hand is 5 and my lead time is 3. So, ang on hand ko for item B is 5. So, i-carry ko lang yan hanggang sa week na gagamitin ko siya. So, 5 minus 15, again, absolute difference. So, that's 10. So, kailangan ma-receive ko din siya ng week 7. Ngayon, kailan ko ba dapat siya i-order? So, based on my lead time, 3 weeks. So, magibilang tayo ng 3 weeks. 1, 2, 3. So, naandun tayo sa week 4. Okay? So, sa week 4, tayo magsiset ng order para ma-receive natin siya ng week 7. Okay? Next. Ang next na item na nasa ating product structure is si item D. And si item D nakadepende kay item B. So, si item B natapos ng week 4. So, ibig sabihin, si item D will begin in week 4. And then, ang sabi sa structure, dalawang item ng D ang kailangan sa kada isang unit ng B. So, therefore, para makuha ko kung ilan yung gross requirement ng D, I have to multiply my value here of 10 times 2, which will be on week 4. So, sa item D, so, lagay ko rito, item D, so, 2 times 10, which is on week 4. So, kaya ito ay 20. 
So, yung on hand ng D is 10 and yung lead time ko is 2 weeks. So, lalagyan ko lang to ng 10. So, again, carry over hanggang kailan, hanggang anong week ko siya kailangan. So, 10 minus 20, absolute difference. You will need 10 items. And then, 10 ulit dito. And then, ang sabi, 2 weeks ang lead time. So, 1, 2, na andun yung ating planned order release. Okay? So, di ko nalagyan ng label dito. So, we have item B on the second table. Okay. Now, we have the next level code. So, yung ating item C. Now, take note that item C has two sources. So, for item B and for item D. So, dalawa, kada isang unit of B and isa, kada isang unit of D. So, kapag kinompute natin or ginawa natin siya dun sa table, you have to also indicate kung saan ba natapos si B at kung saan natapos si D. Si B, nag-end ng, ng week 4. And at week 4, twice yung kailangan ko. Twice of your B. So, si item C, sa mga katwed, kapag sinulat ko rito, item C, so, yung una kong item will begin on week 4. So, 2 times 10 is also 20. So, 20 dito. So, lalagyan ko siya ng label na ito ay galing kay item B. Okay? And then next, yung isa na C na galing kay D. At yung D ko naman nagtapos ng week 2. So, ibig sabihin, sa week 2 naman ako magsisimula. So, we have... 10. So, kinopya lang natin yung 10 kasi times 1 lang naman. And then, yung aking label is uh, is D. So, D ito, hindi C. So, item D. So, ibig sabihin, yung 10 na ito is coming from D. And then, yung 20 is coming from B. Now, take note that our inventory on hand for item C is 10. And your lead time is 1 week. So, meron tayong on hand na 10. So, 10... And then, 10. Now, take note na dito, naubos na yung on hand natin. So, hindi tayo kailangan umorder. So, 0 dito and then 0 doon. So, doon lang tayo nagkaroon ng net requirement. Kailangan ko rin ma-receive siya by that same time, week 4. And then, 1 week yung ating lead time. So, meron tayong 20 dito. So, lalagyan ko lang siya ng label na ito ay for item B. So, walang magiging problema for item D kasi meron tayong on hand na na-consume naman natin. Ngayon, ano ang scenario kung sakaling wala tayong on hand? Okay, example. Paano kapag walang on hand inventory? Kung walang on hand inventory, so 0 ito, so 0 yon 0 doon, magkakaroon ka ng net requirement. So, meron din tayong net requirement dito. So, nalagyan mo lang siya ng label na D. So, ganun pa rin yung analysis. You have the option to order an, on week 1 and have a separate order on week 3. So, dalawang beses ka order Kung hindi naman mahal yung ordering cost or yung inventory cost pala, kasi you have to stock your items in your warehouse, pwede ka nang umorder ng 30 ng week 1. Okay? So, analysis pa rin naman yun. Ngayon, isa pang senaryo, ma'am, paano po kapag sumobra yung inventory ko? Let's say, ang aking ano, ang aking inventory is 20. Okay, paano kung 20 yung on hand ko rito? So, ganun pa rin naman, 20 dito, 20 doon. So, nagamit yung 10, so meron kang on hand na 10. And then, another 10, saka lang ako magkakaroon ng net requirement doon. Then, order ulit ng 10 and then, 10 for my planned order release. So, naka-carry over lang. So, yung 20 dito na on hand mo, 10 yung kailangan. So, na-consume mo yung 10. And then, yung 10 will be carried over. Yung 10 na excess will be carried over on the next period na magagamit naman for week 4. Okay? So, yun lang yung ibig sabihin noon. Okay. Ayan. So, brain lang natin. So, let's go to the original setup. Now, we have how many on hand ulit ng C. So, we have 10. 10 on hand. So, 10, 10, 0, and then 0, 20, and then 20. And ang sabi, this is coming from item B. 
And then lastly, for item E, so based on the structure, si item E ay 3 times the value of D. So yung D nag end ng week 2, so yung E will begin on week 2. So 3, 3 times 10, so that is 30. So we have 30. And then may on hand ba tayo? Yes, we have on hand of 5. So, may on hand tayo na 5 units. So, 5, 5. We have net requirements of 25, 25, and 25 to be ordered on week 1. Okay? Now, we want to verify kung tama ba yung mga na-compute natin kanina. Uh, ang pang-verify dito kung tama is yung time phase graph ninyo and yung net requirement solution kanina doon sa unang video. Ngayon, Ang sabi, balikan natin si item A. Item A daw will be needing 15 units and dapat week 7, sinisimula na siyang i-produce. So, kung babalikan natin yung ating time phase graph, si item A should start ng week 7. So, tama. Sa net requirements, 15 units ang ating item A. Alright? So, next, item B. Si item B, dapat may 10 units na requirement and week 4 siya magsisimula. So, sa time phase graph, ang start ng B ay sa week 4. And 10 daw dapat yung units na kailangan. 10 units tayo kay item B. Next, item D. Si item D, week 2 nagsimula. Or sa week 2 daw dapat siya sisimulang i-arrange or i-order. And then, 10 units yung kanyang kailangan sa net requirement. So, week 2, si D. Asan si D? Si D, ito yung start. Nasa week 2 tayo. And then, sa net requirements, 10 units. Okay? Next, si item C. Si item C, dapat magsimula na tayong umorder ng week 3. So, itong kanina, wala tayong kailangan ni-order kasi nga na-consume natin. So, sa time phase graph, Week 3. Week 3 nandito. And then yung nasa week, week 1, hindi natin kailangan kasi nga meron tayong um, on-hand na inventory. And yung ating uh, remaining items is 20 for item C. Check natin sa ating net requirements. So, 20 units yung item C. And then finally, yung ating item E. So, dapat week 1 mag-start yung production and by that time, ang net requirement natin is 25. So, uh, week 1 nag-start yung E and then, ang net requirement natin is also 25. So, yun yung pan-check natin kung tama yung mga answers natin for our gross requirements plan. And that ends our discussion for this topic. And I'll see you on our next videos. Bye!